Hi, I'm James, the box office artist, and this is Ask the Artist season two. That's right, this is my interview series where I interview uh, professionals in all sorts of different art fields, in the comic book realm, in the concept, the design realm, video games, all of that. And I did a whole slew of new videos um, for, uh, that came from Fan Expo earlier this year. And we're gonna start off with a bang. And we're gonna start off with a guy I actually knew about a long, long time ago. Let's go way back to, I'd say, about 2001, I would like to say, 2002. I was working at a company called Dreamwave, and uh, all of a sudden we found about, out about an artist that they hired that was working on a title. The title was called Necro War. The Necro War, and we looked at the art and we were like, holy cow, this art is phenomenal. I've never seen artwork like this before. And it was done by a guy, his name was Addy Granoff. Addy Granoff, that's right. <laughs> I've been a huge fan of his ever since, and it was just an amazing experience to see him go from being a freelancer at Dreamwave to one of the young guns at Marvel. I think that was like around 2004, 2005, 2006. He was one of the young guns, and then working on Marvel's greatest hits, including Iron Man, and becoming one of the catalysts for the MCU that we know about today. And it was a pleasure to talk to him at FanX this year. So my buddy Jonathan, who is my co-host of the Box Office Artist Podcast, again, you can find that link down below to our podcast, he did, conducted this interview with Addy Granoff, and it's a wonderful interview. So many insights into his journey throughout art, as well as his steps into the MCU, and why the MCU is doing a little bit better than the DCEU. We're going to find out what his thoughts are about those, and you can find out about that right now. We are here at Fan Expo with Addy Grenoff. Hello. Hello there, sir. Hi. Now, perhaps one of your most iconic pieces of work is Iron Man, of course, but can you tell us a little bit about how you broke into the industry even before that? Right after um, uh, art college, I uh, started working at Nintendo as a concept designer, and I worked there for a couple of years and uh, decided to um, decided that you know office work really wasn't for me so I tried to break out doing freelance work and I uh, started working on um, uh, comic book related properties but still doing concept art uh, and then uh, I was offered to do a comic book by a company called Dreamwave that used to be here in Toronto actually and uh, um, I did uh, three issues of that and uh, Marvel saw those issues and liked them and uh, said that, you know, asked me if I would like to work for them. And that was uh, 2003 and that's kind of how I bro broke into it really. The first work I did for Marvel were uh, Iron Man and She-Hulk covers and uh, they were, became really popular. So when they decided to relaunch the Avengers at the time and then all of the different titles, they offered uh, uh, Warren Ellis and me to relaunch Iron Man. Uh, and what people probably don't remember is there was a time before Iron Man was popular and that was that time. So uh, they were willing to kind of just take a chance on, you know, right. a fairly fresh artist and uh, that obviously worked out really well. Well, because interestingly enough, that a lot of the design aspects of that is what carried over to the film and I think John Favreau actually yeah. even approached you to help Yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, they used that book kind of as a, a style bible for, for the movie. So John Favreau then uh, uh, asked me to, to ha come and help work on the movie. So I spent maybe seven months working on the first Iron Man, uh, on the design of uh, Iron Man and Iron Monger. Uh, and then keyframe illustration, like designing the scenes, the, uh, the key action scenes. So I would do paintings of those scenes for the, for the film. So I do, did that on uh, the Iron Man movies and on the Avengers, the first Avengers. And then uh, uh, last year I spent the year working on Infinity War 1 and 2 and then on Black Panther. Um, so actually Black Panther is probably since the first Iron Man, it's probably the, the, the like first time since then that I had like a character to myself. So I designed the new uh, costume for um, uh, Black Panther. Yeah. What would you say are the different pressures that you would experience in the comic versus the film industry? The deadline aspect is different. So for instance, when I do a cover, I have a set deadline 
and the artwork has to be completely finished by then. While on a movie, it's more kind of like, oh, by this Friday when we have a meeting, we should have Iron Man's uh, 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 like side of his head, kind of like some ideas, and then you know I do that, and then we have a back and forth, and it's kind of like a more of a. Um, the pressure is more to perform rather than finish something, while in comics you have to really finish stuff to, you know, send it to the publishing. But I mean, from my point of view, I just try to, because I just paint, so I try to just approach everything in a similar way. I'm very methodical, right. uh, so sometimes when I do comics, I bring in some of my movie experience into it, which is a bit different to what other comic book artists do. But then when I work on movies, I bring a lot of my comic book experience into that, which is also very different to how a lot of movie artists work, you know. Because a lot of movie artists kind of start with like, you know, uh, very loose brush strokes type of things and then it tightens. While I'm a lot more, I start with a structure and I like to have a layout ready before I start painting. So that's kind of like the the main real production difference between you know what what like a lot of movie artists do and what I do. You know what is Marvel doing right in terms of approaching artwork, production, and movies that other companies uh, don't seem to be doing correctly. Marvel seem especially like the the uh, the head of Marvel, Kevin Feige. He seemed to have figured out what made uh, comic movies be not so good in the past. And he's tried to really rectify that and that's by embracing the comic book look. Not trying to suddenly, you know, make it into something completely different. So, uh, uh, visually, like the easiest way to explain it to me is when we were designing Iron Man, the idea was when you squint and you can kind of just barely see it, it looks just like the comic book Iron Man. It's only when you go then into the details, then you realize that there are the movie details. It's made to look like it really functions and it has all of these things that you couldn't pull off in comics. But overall, when you, like I said, when you squint, it looks just like a comic book character. Same with Captain America. You know, they try to not reinvent it, but just take the, the feel and the look of the comic books and just make it more... Uh, uh, believable for movies and I think that's been the secret because in the past with comic book movies they would always be like yeah yeah you know that's cool and all but we know how to do it better and then they would ruin it kind of thing right. and I think that was the biggest difference in, in, in some cases uh, they miss that spirit of the movies while with a lot of them not, not that all of the Marvel movies were successful some were more successful than others but in the best of them they really captured that essence of what's in the comics and I think that's why fans have embraced it and it has actually translated and actually mainstream audience also you know they go and they're like oh wow this is so fun so colorful so you know and it's like oh you know it's because the comics have really made it you know, they figured it out for you, so why reinvent it? Just use it. It's kind of how I approach them. When you look at, like, you know, Jack Kirby's artwork and my artwork, they're, you know, polar opposites. Part, yeah. But uh, I try to stay true to the characters. So even though I utilize my more realistic style, I don't try to suddenly do, you know, a, 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 a gritty fine art or whatever. I, I try to embrace the color, the madness, the, you know, the design elements to, because otherwise, why do it? If you're gonna just, you know, I might as well just do my own thing rather than, you know, work on these characters. So that's kind of how I see it. Iron Man kind of started it all, you know, and you were on the ground floor of this renaissance of approaching comic book movies correctly. As an artist, how does that make you feel? Does that make you feel proud that you were at the ground floor of this emergence of quality movies? I mean, yeah, I think because um, Iron Man Extreme is the book I did, had that kind of cinematic look to it already. Uh, it was very lucky for both me and Marvel Studios that there was like this time when it kind of came together that the look that I was trying to create was the look that they suddenly were like, oh, we can see how this would work in a movie, you know, because a lot of um, like producers, they you know how to, they know how to put movie productions together, but they're not really visually 
you know, they're not artists. So it took something like that book for them to look at it and be like, oh wow, actually, if we made the movie look like this, we can see how that would work. So that really does, you know, it makes me feel like I was there kind of thing, you know. And then, uh, you know, the first Iron Man movie really was make or break. If that movie sucked, there would be no Marvel Universe kind of thing. So um, I think it was fortunate for everybody involved, including the fans, that it all, you know, came together and worked out. And, uh, you know, I feel very, you know, proud and fortunate to have been there kind of thing. And, you know, like the pose when Iron Man is punching the ground, you know, I did that as a cover. It was one of my first, it was my number two cover I did for Marvel. Uh, and to see it now everywhere, you know, and when we go to Japan, and we're told like, oh, action hit figures have to be able to do that pose in order for people, because they always, they call it the tripod pose. And it's like, if, if action figure can't do it, it's no good kind of thing. And right. I'm like, wow. You know, and most people don't know that that came from a cover that I did, but I'm, I'm just so happy because I'm part of, you know, pop culture. You know, in a way, I mean, I watched the episode of Simpsons and the comic book guy becomes this like Iron Man-like hero. And he comes and like does the tripod pose. And I was like, yes, you know, it's, it's great. So, you know, to go all over, like I said, you know, we go to, to Japan, to go to China, go to, you know, uh, all, all over the world and people come up with my work and I'm like, wow, it's everywhere kind of yeah. thing, you know. They've either seen the movies or read the books or have action figures or, you know, whatever. And it's, yeah, it's incredible. It really is amazing. Thank you to my man Addy for uh, doing this interview for us. What a fantastic guy and, and he's doing putting out so much amazing work. Please do follow Addy. All of his uh, links are all down uh, in the description down below. Make sure that you follow him and let make sure that you let him know that you watched his interview on the Box Office Artist YouTube channel. Now, we actually went in depth about everything that he talked about during this interview on the Box Office Artist podcast. It was myself, my co-host Jonathan, as well as my buddy Martin and JJ. We did a roundtable uh, discussion about everything that he talked about, whether it came whether it comes to coming up uh, to artist career, as well as everything he said about the MCU. We talked about all of it, and we talk about it on the Box Office Artist Podcast. So make sure you check that out. There's a link down below for the Box Office Artist Podcast. Download that now, and download all the podcasts. You know, they are not time sensitive. Hopefully these are podcasts that you could listen to at any time, and they are inspiration for anyone who wants to be an artist. So thank you very much, Addy. You are the best continue continued success to Addy and thank you guys for watching hey you guys are the best thank you for following my YouTube channel I'm putting out content every single day and thank you for all of your amazing feedback and uh, for all of your support I really do appreciate it if you know if you're new to my channel you looked around you like what you see if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button well I will be your friend for life please also share this video like this video and my name is James I am the box office artist follow me on all the social media all down below I'm here to say keep drawing and I'll see you all tomorrow.